Hi, I'm Mike. Welcome back to the shop. The charging system on the Spitfire isn't working, so we're going to diagnose it and fix it. I installed a voltmeter in the car so that I have a better understanding of what's happening while the car is running. The voltmeter should uh, normally be about 12.6 if there is no charging. That 12.6 is what the battery should be reading. And in a charging state, um, it should be at 13.8 or better. Um, so we should see the needle running it running close to the 14 level. So let's take a look and see what this uh, what this comes out to when I turn it on. Look at that. So it's a just above 12. In the, uh, in the ignition on and let's see what it looks like when it's running there we go pull the choke out a little bit Mike what are you thinking all right so, it's, it's not doing very much. It's not charging. So, we gotta figure out why it's not charging. Okay, so for the charging circuit not to work, there's, there are three main sources of the problem. Either you got a fan belt that's too loose and it doesn't allow the alternator to operate properly, or you got a bad alternator, or there's something wrong in the wiring between the alternator and the battery. So um, we'll check all three. I'm going to do the first one and the third one right now. So the fan, the, the fan belt, is it loose? Um, if you can't spin the, the fan by hand on the alternator, fan belt is tight enough. So um, actually I had to tighten this up a couple weeks ago uh, and I thought that was the root of the problem, but it isn't. <laughs> so. Um, Fan belt is tight enough. I can't turn that. Um, the second uh, one is, again, the alternator. We're going to test that um, only through, um, we'll, we'll deduce that um, by showing that the wiring is okay or, or not. Um, so in order to do that, I'm going to test the wiring in uh, two locations. I'm going to take a uh, digital uh, multimeter and I'm going to set it on voltage. So I'm going to use it as a voltmeter, digital voltmeter. And I'm going to uh, test that across the two terminals, the positive and the negative, and see what reading I get. And it should be above 13.8. Um, if it's not, either the alternator's not working or there's something wrong with the wiring. So I'll test, I'll test it on the battery, and then I'm going to test it um, on the uh, wiring coming out of the alternator. And again, if I get the same, if I get the same reading on the alternator, uh, uh, as, as I did on the battery, then I've got a problem with the alternator. If I get a different reading, if it's higher on the alternator, if the reading is higher on the alternator and lower on the battery, then I know I've got a wiring problem. So I'm going to go through and test both of those. I'll show you the readings as I do it. So now uh, we know we've got a bad alternator, and not only that, we got a battery that's low on charge. So I've hooked up the, the battery tender um, to charge the battery up. So um, I'm going to take the old alternator off and uh, install the new alternator. And I'm, I'll show you the source for the alternator um, in, the, in the comments section. Okay, there's two bolts uh, that connect the alternator to the 
Um, the brackets are, and they're both half inch head, uh, so you need half inch socket for the bolt, the top and the bottom. And there's uh, two wires. Um, on, on most Spitfires, there's three wires, but I took one of them off when I did my rewire project because it wasn't needed. So you just disconnect the brown wires from the back of the alternator and take out the two bolts and uh, that's it and then you install the new alternator so I'm going to go through that process right now the uh, bolts on this uh, installation are pretty tight it's kind of hard to get a, a ratchet wrench in there so I'm going to use on the top end I'm going to use a uh, box wrench it's half inch or if you only have a metric wrench uh, it's a 13 millimeter um, and then on the bottom again it's a half inch in that case it's a little bit of a reach so I'm going to use a 3 8 in order to minimize the size of the socket I'm going to use a 3 8 um, wrench and a little bit of an extension to be able to get to get that in there so I'll do that on one side and then on the other side on the bottom I'll use the the uh, box wrench in order to, to do all of that. So I'm going to start with the top. needed a shorter wrench and a lot more patience. These fine threads, I love them because they're a lot stronger than the coarse threads, but man, what a pain in the butt to get out. <laughs> Okay, got that one. Now, uh, same thing for the for the, the nut blow. Socket in the front, open end wrench in the back. Okay, so it wasn't box wrenches, it wasn't open end wrenches. Ultimately, it ended up being a deep socket, impact socket, half inch drive, using a nice uh, speed wrench essentially. To get in there and, and get at it that's really tight probably the easiest way <laughs> easy yeah take the uh panels out so they can actually get to it but i don't know <laughs> I'll, I'll end up using this this is a lot harder than it has to be okay this is a view of the alternator from the top and you can see i got the bolt undone and or the nut off the bolt but I can't get the bolt out of the casing because this is not a factory electric fan. And guess what? The bolt runs right into the fan. So my only option now, and this probably would have been a good one to do anyways, is to uh, unbolt the alternator mount from the engine block. Well, I got the alternator out. I guess I'm not going to be getting the core charge back on this one. <laughs> it just wasn't going to come out. So, um, not without taking out a bunch of stuff. So, um, okay, on with the show. <laughs> okay, so lesson learned with the uh, bolting of the lower part of the the frame here, or the lower part of the bracket. I've now got the head of the uh, bolt facing towards the oil filter and then I can get the, the nut 
on the front here. So, sorry, that's a pretty bad shot. A little tight, but uh, this way I'll be able to pull this bolt out. And it looks a little tight. Might hit the distributor, but you know what? I was able to get it in on here, and uh, so I should be able to get it out. Now, the reason why I had the bolt in the opposite direction, um, I actually rebuilt this engine and didn't have any interference problems when it was on a stand. <laughs> so I wasn't thinking about um, the uh, the radiator. So now, um, lesson learned. I got the bolt oriented in the right direction. Um, also note, I'm putting some, uh, I'm, I'm starting to protect the wires here. The, the tape that I had on the, the, uh, the fabric tape that I had on the wiring um, was a little messy. Uh, it, it had a lot of sticky uh, residue on it. So I'm covering it. It was protected, but now I'm covering it, the uh, wiring to protect myself so I don't get crap all over my hands. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. Um, on everything in the engine compartment while I'm, you know, while I'm in there, right? Okay, um, I'm going to start bolting this up, um, getting it all uh, all tight, uh, and I'll show you what the wire loom looks like. And again, you can see the the fabric here. It's a it's a it's a nice uh, friction tape, but it's it's got a it get, when it gets hot, it gets kind of a kind of a goo um, on the on the. Uh, you can see the the shininess to it. It's it's it uh, it's sticky. So I'll cover that up. Okay, so hooking up the alternator was a heck of a lot easier than taking it off. Um, what I've got here is uh, I've got it tightened. Um, it's I can't spin the the fan by hand, so that's pretty good. Um, I've got the. Uh, I installed the wire loom, uh, just plastic wire loom. Got it from a local auto parts store. I got a little bit of tightening up to do. So I um, also um, charged the battery uh, yesterday or overnight. And what I'm doing here is uh, just I'm gonna test it to show because it was it was like 12.10 uh, prior to the charging. So I'm gonna put that on there. And now we're at 12.53, so that's that's good enough. Um, so I've got everything hooked up. All the wiring is on. It's back in place. Got my uh, everything's hooked back up. So I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it on, and I'm gonna take a look at uh, what the what the numbers say, and uh, we'll be right back. All right, look at that. Oh, just over 14. So that was the trick. Awesome. Let's go verify it with the uh, the gauge, the digital gauge. Yeah, it's right on 14. Okay, it's in neutral. battery problem. Let me verify it. 14 and a half there. Let's see what it looks like at. Okay, so there. Got it hooked in there. And it's 14 and a half there. So that was the issue. Perfect. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Um, car's working great. Voltmeter showing that the uh, charging systems working so uh, although it didn't go exactly as planned uh, it all worked out I learned a few things about orientation of the bolts on the on the alternator um, it's a lot easier it was a lot easier putting it together than it was taking it apart and in the future if I have to replace the alternator it, it will work uh, it'll be a lot easier to, to take it apart so um, if you like what you saw please uh, hit the subscribe button and have a great day.